Hi folks, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me today. I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. I wonder how much money is siphoned off of NASA for their black budgets. You might have heard how the Hubble telescope is no longer working after um, some of its gyroscopes to keep it aligned there in space uh, went out. They did do a spacewalk several years ago to replace at least one gyroscope and I don't know if they did it or not but now it's down to two and it shut down and then another thing that NASA announced was its Neil Wise um, telescope I guess what you would call it they're going to let it just burn up in the Earth's atmosphere instead of um, dragging it back up to a better altitude what NEOWISE is, um, Near Earth Object Wide Field Infrared Surveyor Explorer. It looks for um, asteroids that could yeah, impact the Earth and other things. Um, evidently, what's going on is with the coming rise of solar flares and the drag that it puts upon the satellites, they're just going to let it crash to the Earth, burn up. It's not like they don't have plenty of time. They're saying that sometime in 2025, this spacecraft is expected to drop low enough into Earth's atmosphere that it will become unstable and unusable. About every 11 years, the sun experiences a cycle of increased activity that peaks during a period called solar maximum. Solar flares and coronal mass ejections will become more frequent and they say it will heat up our planet's atmosphere. I briefly talked about this, how it creates the auroras and during that time, yeah, the upper atmosphere becomes heated. Blame it on global warming. Well, no, you can blame it on the sun. Those there at NASA say they are at the mercy of the sun with no means to keep it in orbit. I've heard of them dragging other satellites to higher orbits in the past. I don't know why they can't do that with this thing. Neowise was launched back in 2009. It was used to study distant galaxies, cooling stars, exploding white dwarf stars, outgassing comets, and near-Earth asteroids, and more. I guess it was divided up into two missions, one called WISE, W-I-S-E, and Neowise, N-E-O-W-I-S-E. By 2010, the WISE mission had found tens of millions of actively gobbling up, feeding massive black holes across the sky. You might hear pounding in the background. My neighbor next door is um, putting up Christmas decorations. and So, yeah, please bear with the, the pounding. The WISE program used what is called a chirogenic coolant. And what that did was use the gas to track infrared, infrared wavelengths that are emitted from warm objects. After the um, coolant ran out, they put the spacecraft into hibernation in 2011. So in 2013, they reactivated it because it could still see near-Earth asteroids and comets. I think you'll probably remember when we lost the uh, Earth's southern um, telescope that would look for um, these asteroids that could potentially be a danger to our Earth. With the telescopes we have now, um, if an object came from the direction of the Sun, we wouldn't see it until probably it's too late. They are building a new one called Neo Surveyor, but that one isn't even scheduled to be launched until 2027. Neowise has found over 3,000 near-Earth objects. 215 objects that Neowise did discover. They were able to um, refine the orbits of these objects, also gauging their size. It was also used in an interplanetary defense exercise that focused on the hazard of asteroid Apophis. A-P-O-P-H-I-S. With the recent data collected from this satellite, NASA now says that Apophis um, has a 0 0.0000000.96 percent of hitting the Earth in March of next year, 2024. 
or a 1 in a 10 million chance. Originally, back in uh, 2007, they thought it had a greater probability of impacting us. During its mission, it also discovered 25 comets, including the Long Period Comet C-2020 F3, and they named it Neowise. That comet became a dazzling celestial object visible in the northern hemisphere for several weeks in 2020 and was the first comet that could be seen by the naked eye since 2007. As part of the NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office at NASA's headquarters in Washington, the NASA Authorization Act of 2005 directed NASA to discover and to characterize at least 90% of the near-Earth objects more than 460 feet across that would come within 30 million miles of Earth. While something that size would not wipe out life here on Earth, the one that supposedly killed all the dinosaurs was about um, six miles across, probably a little bit larger. But something that's 460 feet across um, definitely would cause significant regional damage or worse should you know they hit the ocean and create a tsunami or a major city. What if there was a nuclear power plant within that impact zone? So it's going to be at least two years until they have something else up there watching for these asteroids. Um, and for the amount of money that it costs to build and etc. Why would they deliberately let it slowly degrade from its orbit and crash into the Earth? It, it just doesn't make sense unless they figure... Um, there's something else coming. Something much worse is going to happen soon. They're going to funnel that money, uh, use it for a black budget somewhere else. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. Yeah, two heads are better than one. And with all of you on here, you might come up with some ideas. I would like to know what you think. Please stay safe and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.